Thank you. Thank you so much, Naval. Uh, Anurag had a question. How do you know that, uh, you know, as much as gaming and alcohol and drugs that addictive, mobiles are as well. So we'll look at that answer from you later on through the day. Thank you so much for setting the ball rolling, but doesn't look like this audience is warmed up yet. When will we have the alcohol on the floor? Are we having some alcohol at all? Because we need to get these spirits roaring really high tonight. Um, we're starting off with the panel discussion. We have a very pertinent topic of discussion talking about mobile marketing, specifically how much is too much? Personalization versus intrusive marketing, ticking the check boxes just to get a brand app for your brand. A lot of things are gonna be discussed here tonight and we have a robust panel here with us that is going to be moderated by uh, Vanita. Uh, I'll be calling out your names, request you to please come up on stage. And as normally through all the um, panels that I curate or anchor, I would like the audience to participate as much as these panelists have prepared here. So we'll try to keep uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes within the time allocated for the panel to have uh, an interactive session with the audience here. Vanita, I request you to please come up on stage with a loud round of applause. Please acknowledge this panel. Ms. Vanita Keswani, CEO, Madison Media Sigma. She's been recognized as a media professional for over 15 years and has carved a niche for herself in the field of media. Thank you so much for doing this for us, Vanita. Mr. Akash Banerjee, Head Marketing and Partnerships, Viacom 18 Digital Ventures an alumnus of Faculty of Management Studies, started his career with FMCGs and now, of course, with the world of media. Mrs. Sachin Kapoor, co-founder and CMO nearby. Strong career path in sales and marketing, started with the media and online space, of course, and uh, moved into Times of India. Earlier, he was also the CMO for Groupon. Our next panelist, Mr. Shamsuddin Jasani, Managing Director, ISOBAR India. He's been in the digital industry for over 16 years, launched ISOBAR in August 2008 and has grown the agency's billing size from zero to 150 million US dollars. Not a mean achievement there for sure. Mr. Veer Chand Botra, Chief Innovation Officer, Netcore Solutions. A marketing technologist, social media enthusiast with over 17 years of experience. So you can see all of these people have been with the digital media industry since the time, since the word go. So they've, they've seen it all and they're seeing the transitions going high. Like I mentioned about 40, 45 minutes, what we're looking, maybe a panel discussion for 30, 35 minutes and then 10 minutes for a Q&A. All yours. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. And I hope we don't bore you and uh, we have lots of questions at the end of the panel discussion. Uh, well, the, uh, just to set the context, uh, like Suparna just mentioned, mobile has changed the landscape of consumerism in India. We all know that. It's our favorite tool to just about do everything and anything, right from, you know, watching news, television, uh, you know, con socializing, whatever it takes. It's, it's all our mobile, right? It's, it's really, really our favorite tool. Given that that's the case, obviously it's the best place a marketer can find audiences today. And uh, having said that, with so much power on the mobile, uh, with power there comes responsibility. And today's session is a lot about, uh, you know, how much is too much, which is about responsibility and how, uh, you know, marketers don't make certain mistakes to really piss off the consumer, essentially. So um, uh, we'll structure the panel in a way that first we'll have each one of them speak for three minutes on what they are doing in their profession currently, in their current role, and how they see the topic broadly in a very global overview kind of a sense. And then I'll take uh, you know, questions and uh, spear the, steer the conversation. Uh, to start with, uh, can I request Sachin to start, please? Thanks. Thanks, Vanita. Good evening, everyone, and uh, really honored to be here. Um, so from a perspective of what we've been doing on mobile, we started out as Groupon. Groupon was the largest deal site in the world and still is the largest deal site in the world. Uh, there was a time when we, we were looking at desktop to be our, our main sort of mainstay. And suddenly, uh, I think towards the end of 2012 and the beginning of 2013, we saw what a lot of marketeers and a lot of panels had been discussing about the emergence of mobile. 
And we saw that happen almost overnight when our traffic started on mobile started to rise. And uh, to be honest, in, in Groupon India, we were caught a little off guard uh, with that. We had not really prepared. Our technology in the US was, was at a different space, and our technology in India was, was not kind of catching up. Uh, that is the time when we uh, decided to do a management buyout of the Groupon India business, and we rebranded it to Nearby. We wanted to focus not only on deals, but also on relevance and, and make it a discovery-led local commerce experience. And from that day in August of 2015 till today, our entire focus has been on mobile. Not to say the desktop has stopped, but mobile has been extremely important. To the extent that we've seen uh, almost double retention rate on mobile apps for our business, we've seen uh, almost a 30 to 35 percent lower cost of acquisition uh, on mobile. And, and it's just, just growing. So every day that we work, while we focus on, on the desktop, uh, all our energies are just focused on, on improving the mobile experience for the customer. Thank you. Akash? Hi. Uh, I had the marketing for Woot. Woot uh, is the digital video destination or a platform from the house of Ycom 18 that houses close to 25,000 plus hours of content spread across various genres. We launched Woot around four months back, and in a space of four months, we have already become pretty much the leading video on demand digital brand, and we are already seeing extremely healthy time spent by the viewers close to 35 to 40 minutes per day per viewer. And obviously, a lot of the content that we have housed as a part of our platform and the big success that we have seen on Woot has been thanks to this massive data explosion, massive digital explosion, thanks to essentially three basic things. Higher better access to internet across the country in deeper pockets as well, cheaper access to smartphones, and most importantly, a gradual but certain lowering of the data cost. These three specific drivers could also act as big inhibitors in different markets if these three things are not as per what the consumer is really demanding. But we sincerely and surely see, thanks to a lot of the revolution that possibly Geo has now uh, you know, announced in the last couple of weeks, that things are only going to be better and bigger from here onwards. And specific to the topic that how much is too much, I would just like to make two points over here. One is that for audiences, advertisers, and content providers alike, I think the significant advantage will only be gained by not just understanding that how the consumers are viewing their content and making the purchases, but most importantly, why the consumers are behaving in a manner they are demonstrating currently. That's one. And second is, for at least for a platform like Woot, we strongly believe that content will continue to be the king. And providers who differentiate themselves on these two accounts, on these two measures, will continue to drive significant advantage. But having said that, for marketers, and more importantly for users, too much of information, too much of choices being given out to them at one level is not just simply empowering. At times, it can be overwhelming. And that's, I think, with the broad topic which we are really going to be discussing today. And I hope to have a good time. And thanks, E4M, for having me over here. Thank you. Veer. Thank you, Vanita. Uh, my company, Netcore, has been instrumental uh, as an enabler in some of the most successful mobile marketing campaigns. And we have seen the rise of mobile 
from being a SMS device and you know campaigns around SMS to uh, uh, to rural marketing, you know on the ground campaigns, uh, media dark market campaigns. We've seen mobile grow from being a SMS and voice channel uh, device to a multi-channel device which not only covers SMS but now even email. We say that email is now a native mobile channel. It's not a, no longer a PC channel. So we have seen the growth of the device, you know, to encompass more and more channels in the ability to reach the customer. And uh, uh, what we do at Netcore is we help the marketer. So we are a marketing technology solutions company, and uh, we help the market do on the calendar campaigns, which are planned campaigns, and also in the moment marketing, which is you know uh, taking uh, opportunities that real time data provides and capitalizing on those uh, opportunities. So on the calendar campaigns as well as in the moment campaigns. That is what Netcore does. Thank you. Sham? Yeah, uh, slightly different thinking. Uh, so yeah, so we uh, so we belong to ISOBAR uh, as an agency. And uh, being the premier digital agency in India, our thoughts really is what's going to happen next. And as uh, Akash was pointing out, um, you know, the geo revolution that has happened, uh, the future really is about devices. It's, it's about mobility and not just mobile. Uh, so while we are talking about mobile, uh, we are talking about how many devices are going to be there with someone. So right now, at this point in time, I have three devices with me. I've got an Apple Watch, I've got the Geo dongle, whatever this is called, and I've got my phone. Um, it's estimated by 2020 there are going to be one trillion devices across the world. That's one trillion opportunities to understand and one trillion uh, touch points for data. Uh, imagine what is the kind of personalization that you could do, what is the kind of insights that you could get. Uh, so as, as, a, as a marketer and, and especially as an agency person, it's, the future is tremendously bright. It's going to bring uh, such brilliant amount of uh, insights to us, uh, such different ways of reaching out to people, uh, you know, uh, beyond just what we're doing on mobile. Uh, as I saw, we are talking about how are we going to take this into virtual reality? Uh, you know, how are we going to take uh, this into augmented reality? That's, that's something that's really, uh, I think, some, that's, that's for the future that's coming up. Uh, the other thing that I would like to point out is that um, we today are living in uh, a mobile world. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we're still very heavily skewed towards, uh, as I would call it, because I've already spent about 16 years in digital. We send it's digital has become traditional digital. So it's already the display, the old search is traditional digital. People have moved on. The consumers moved on to mobile. Uh, everyone is there on this device now and on mobility platforms. Uh, how can we actually accelerate? And people who are not and marketers who are not going to uh, really take this on and with open arms, uh, I think is something that are, that are people are going to be left behind. So uh, today, the mobile revolution is here. It's not tomorrow. It's today that it's there. And we need to really get there uh, as, as marketers, as an agency. So that's, that's pretty much the point that I wanted to make. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so here, uh, let's start now. Uh, essentially, uh, what Shams is exactly saying, so much to learn and every, ever dynamic and ever changing environment. And uh, coming to the first point, which we've been debating about personalization versus intrusiveness, we were uh, actually have a very, uh, very valid point when we were discussing uh, at the back room. Uh, it's actually who really uses the mobile a lot more is still actually everybody does, but it's more the millennials. And way forward is all obviously all one side the millennials and one side like uh, you were mentioning by vote to go to deeper pockets, etc. How do we really see, uh, and this question is to both Akash and uh, Shams, how do we really see the difference coming on from these two segments? Because as I heard um, uh, you speak, Shams, that you see, you have a very interesting point. He has a very interesting point of, you know, really are millennials or the current generation looking at, you know, information being given away as intrusion at all? Or are they pretty okay with it? And what Akash was uh, interestingly mentioning is, you know, really, uh, it's not only about millennials and is this true of millennials versus the deeper, deeper uh, two-tire towns where we are reaching out to women, et cetera. And, uh, so I, I'll start with Shams to take the point yeah, from so, millennials. Uh, the thing about privacy, uh, as he was discussing, uh, privacy is really something which is uh, 
very little now and especially with the millennials they really don't believe in that um, it, the, the next generation really uh, is all about uh, you know snapchat and about uh, us old people are still on facebook but uh, that's where they've gone and they really want to share more and more and more they don't mind sharing more if you're going to give them more relevance uh, hence i would say that uh, it's not too much uh, so they they more they more than happy to share more information uh, because they want stuff which is more relevant to them. So that's, that's really as far as millennials go. And uh, then we had a chat with Akash as well yeah. on that. No, it's a, it's a very valid one. I think the, the young consumers, the so-called mobile-first consumers, the digital natives, we, we end up using a lot of different terms to define this specific set. I think for them, data sharing, uh, privacy, personalization, customization, uh, being extremely adept at experimenting with newer platforms, newer technological advancements, they come very easy. But as a marketer, and I'm sure there are lots of them you know, who are sitting over here in the audiences as well, the fundamental question that we all need to ask is that for whom are we designing the platforms for, the products for, and who is my intended TG set? The point to be noted is that while the current 250, 300, 350 odd internet consumers, and let's talk about you know, the more frequent 200, 250 odd million consumers every month who are there on the digital medium, they, they obviously have much minimal issues in terms of uh, traversing from one platform to the other. Apple, iOS has a different system, has a different ecosystem. Android has a different ecosystem. Windows has a different one. Mobile app behaves in a certain manner. Websites behave in a certain manner. Mobile sites behave in a different manner. Apps and uh, applications that are designed for TV, for casting, for Chromecast, they all have their own individual ways of functioning. And the digital first consumers, they don't mind experimenting with any of these advancements. But the point to be noted is what's going to happen in the next five years in this country. In the next five years, the next 100, 200 million odd consumers are primarily going to be coming from your tier three cities and more importantly, from the rural set. How do you ensure that these consumers have the necessary skill sets, have the necessary knowledge to be able to traverse from one platform to the other at equal ease as is seen and experienced by your digital natives? And on that front, I think this is something you know, which we all marketers have possibly read in our uh, big marketing uh, Bibles, Kotlers of the world, that the fundamental thing that really drives a purchase, that really drives consumption, is the decision simplicity. By giving too much of information, by giving too much of choices, will not necessarily yield higher purchase or higher consumption. Consumers are essentially, inherently lazy fellows. They want all the decisions to be made in an easier format so that lesser the effort, the higher the possibilities of transaction. And I hence, hear you say sorry. that the smaller towns, you just see that it may not, should not be an overwhelming experience. And Absolutely. A lot of education is there yeah. and all Something of that. Something which I said, it cannot be while we may see it as something, you know, all these initiatives might be empowering the individuals, empowering the users, but empowering should not lead to overwhelming the sure, consumers. Sure. Understood. But I, I think broadly the point uh, I agree with uh, Shams is that, you know, do use the data wisely, but then there is no problem with millennials is broadly the point that he made, which I think you also so, agreed so with. Can I disagree with uh, that? Yes. We got a certain point. So a little, little bit of friction is good for momentum, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, uh, so while I agree with what uh, Shams is saying in terms of the spirit of what he's saying, uh, that the millennials are more open, but everybody has a threshold. They may be more open than probably people born in the 70s. Sure. 
uh, but they also but how much, much. But and how to much? whom <laughs> so i think it's always a trade off between too much hey, my private information what am i getting in return right and uh, in, in that information also i will stop at a point some people will stop at giving demographic information and they are fine with that some people may be willing to give uh, their uh, financial information but everybody has a threshold because it's all about taking information using it with permission but giving something in return so if the if, if the customer is not seeing value yeah. uh, by giving you his private information well, and not getting in return then he'll, he'll not be happy that sure of course they won't even give it and in fact that brings us to a point that millennials also may not be giving a lot of truthful information <laughs> So uh, that's another interesting area yeah, what do you have to say there it's uh, so it's, it's a simple fact that uh, approximately what one and a half no two billion people across the world have whatsapp uh, and uh, each one of us has very few actually said that okay i don't want to share information uh, they pretty much everyone is sharing information they can actually which pretty much means that they can read your messages that I, i i agree we are all lazy huh? yeah, we so, still don't so, so that's do the thing that i mean th th that goes to as each and every each and every message so a whatsapp knows what you do throughout the day better than what you would know uh, what you're doing throughout the day and hence facebook knows and hence as an advertiser i can take advantage of that as simple as that yeah, yeah. Uh, so so if a billion 2 billion 3 billion people across the world are okay when you were doing this kind of information there's a lot of sensitive information that yes i trust that this information is only going to be used behind a wall which means that i'm not going to be as an advertiser extract that information i'm going to be able to use that information to target better but it is something which people are getting more and more comfortable with and that's that's really where the future is going a majority of people are more comfortable with sharing uh, their information with partners that they trust so that's sure. that's a, that's sure. a big point yeah, that we yeah, should yeah. make yeah, with people that they trust Yeah, Sachin, I mean the, you were mentioning sorry. about uh, you know how you use permissions as a permission prompts, etc. You'd like to speak about yeah, you know something. Yeah, but uh, yeah, before I get there, I think one one very important thing is that as consumers evolve and they today they're giving you those permissions because they're in a hurry to discover something new. When you're downloading an app, ninety percent of us who are evolved you know users don't read the terms and conditions. there are a lot of apps that are taking super serious information from your android phones and i say android phones i'm not uh, i'm i'm not sponsored by apple but i say that because android is more open as a as a platform right and they're taking super serious information they're they're actually listening to uh, you know the the television that you're watching they're taking snapshots of what you're doing on the phone uh, they are they're actually listening they even know the last ad that you watched on television right and all this my marketers are very happy uh, uh saying that oh we're getting a lot of information one a lot of us today don't know what to do with that information a lot of us talk about big data talk about a lot of these very very fancy terminologies but we don't know when and when we face with that data right we don't know how to use it uh second we we use it as as a shortcut saying that oh i've got the data now i'll send him a message and bang this guy will convert that that also does not happen uh the third thing is uh that with all this information the customers the day they realize the day the governments also the governments are also using it right the governments are using it to their advantage to to win elections and so on and so forth but the day these guys realize and that day is not far they will start blocking that information and and we need to be prepared for that a very very good example of that and i'm sorry i'm just telling this is that there was this this company that was into uh analyzing app behavior and they suddenly got i i would not like to take any names here but they were they were into analyzing app behavior and uh, they, they got a lot of traction they were they were tracking a lot of apps what people are doing how people are uh, so information that google was not privy to because it was all happening inside the app and and this company was then acquired by a larger sort of e-commerce player this company had data of a lot of e-commerce players in the country right and when it was acquired by a larger e-commerce player all that data all that sensitive customer information was then owned by this large e-commerce player which is a very dangerous situation for us as marketers to be in and we need to be happy about the fact that we can we can track all this information but we also need to be wary of with what service providers are we sharing that data right so so coming to to the point vanita you were saying that what we do is permission marketing is is something as you know it's very important when you give the customer the choice when you tell him openly blatantly saying that this is the information i'm going to access and uh, you know as you said this is the benefit that i'm going to give 
we've seen that customers happily give that if the perceived value of that benefit is really there. To give you an example, a lot of customers told us that, you know, we use nearby, but we're not constantly reminded of the awesome offers that you have all across. I need to know when I'm entering an area, let's say if I'm entering, uh, you know, a cyber hub in Gurgaon, I need to know what offers you have. So we started taking these permissions saying that can we send you push notifications? A lot of guys signed up for it. And the guys who signed up for it suddenly started reacting to those notifications. Evening, 5 o'clock, I enter Cyber Hub. I send out a notification saying that, you know, this is, this is the hottest offer or these are the set of offers that are, that are running in and around. And suddenly consumers started to, to respond to it. Sure. But that permission was really important. Sure. That's how we ended Yeah, and that, that, you want to say something? Just one point. You know, we are still talking about, uh, you know, this topic from a user point of view mm -hmm. and how the users if given a certain value and benefit and uh, if it's an if it's an uh, if it's an opt in act then it's absolutely fine i would just like to talk about the fact that eventually it is also the onus that needs to lie on the marketers when they are collecting storing managing and deploying the data they need to ensure that it certainly meets the best practices, the best standards with respect to data privacy and data protection. Unfortunately, in this country, there is no legislation, there is no governmental uh, specific charter that clearly lays out you know, these kind of rules, unlike countries like Australia and EU, where government actually plays a very, very strict role and has a very clearly well documented charter in terms of to what extent you can collect the information, how that information needs to be stored, encrypted, and how the same can be deployed, and to what extent. Sure, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, India as a market, right? I mean, it's so diverse, like uh, just, just uh, at a tangent telling, talking about DTH, for example, which is not in the discussion here, but just to make the point of diversity, DTH internationally has a very core target audience, which is like a very segmented, different kind of an audience. But in India, DTH is 70% rural when we started off with it. Now, I, of course, it's also changing a bit, but still, you know, I mean, rural audiences on one side and, you know, urban audiences on one side, I don't know, that's a big uh, uh, difference that India has. So I think even doing anything from a government side is, is, not, a, is not a, it's a very tall task, yeah? Uh, moving on to the notifications piece, I think, Sachin, we also spoke that uh, while uh, notification can be, um, you know, intrusive itself, right? And you spoke about something interesting uh, called a fatigue engine that also you have. Uh, I'd like you to talk about yes. that. So uh, while we were building this notification engine and we wanted to people to transact more often and come back and launch the app, we realized that a lot of apps and one of the biggest reasons, uh, we, we looked at a lot of uh, industry numbers and one of the biggest reasons people uninstall apps and to give you some perspective, some of the most popular apps in this country, leave, leave alone the social media apps, but I'm talking of transactional e-commerce apps, have a three to four month retention of about 7%, which means that in month one, you got 100 people. By the end of month three, only seven of them are left. Everybody else has uninstalled the app. Yes, they will reinstall when you launch all the offers and you know all the big sales and all of that, but, but you're still incurring a lot of repeat cost, right? So what is important is to build what we call the fatigue engine within the system and realize that there's a human at the other end of the device who will be bothered uh, while there'll be guys who love your notifications and you need to segment them, build them into a cohort, people who love seven notifications, 10 notifications in a day, keep bombarding them with that. But the guys who don't like it, limit it. So we, we, we started out with a fatigue engine that said not more than two notifications in a day and that's it. And then there are guys who are, who are, you know, we're realizing that they, they're responding to more of them, so we kind of increase the frequency. It's actually people. hungry people out yes, there, yes. like Shah says. Some of them are really hungry. <laughs> so, so it's interesting. I thought the fatigue engine was a very interesting point. So within personalization intrusion, you actually have how you can control intrusion via personalization. So it's like almost, uh, you know, uh, a balance of both. Um, Sorry, actually yeah. one interesting piece on the notification is that for a lot of consumers, who don't regularly visit an app and suddenly when they receive a notification, they are made to realize, you know what? I had this app on my phone. Oh God, I need to uninstall it immediately. So it yeah. just reminds them that That's bloody true. hell, why the hell, why the heck aren't you uninstalling the app which has been lying there in your, in your mobile? That's true. 
Supana, you want us to open the house to Q&A? Okay. Uh, questions? Um, any questions requested to please raise your hands, identify yourself, the company that you represent, and the person that you'd like to ask. Looks like everybody is dumbfounded right now. You've, you've kind of nailed it. This panel has nailed it completely. Is it? <laughs> so we could just talk for five more minutes. Sure, I absolutely. think we have some more yeah. points. And yeah. uh, anybody wants to ask questions, raise your hand, and I'll probably notice that, and we can uh, you know, conclude the panel till then. That's cool. Just, does that work? Yeah, great. So uh, I think one of the other points, we've, we've covered personalization intrusion pretty well. I think across the board, we've had views from the panelists. Uh, I'd like to move on uh, and invite Shams to talk about some cases, actually, uh, you know, because he's got brilliant uh, work being done across some of our clients. And there's a point on multiple platform information integration, how really you have some brilliant cases of, you know, you, how you make the best of that. So uh, there is stuff which is very basic to extremely advanced. So, so for a for, say, I won't name the client, but for an FMCG client, let me put it that way, uh, we are able to actually do a very basic cross-channel promotion using mobile. So I know, uh, you know, through data that, as they, they pointed out, uh, in terms of saying that there is a, there's a TV spot that is running, how can I plan my uh, media around that and make sure that I have interactions on the mobile phone? Uh, I'm not listening to them. So it's more in terms of a planning process that happens. Uh, I can also integrate at the same time when the person is moving out of home, uh, how do I integrate with the out of home uh, you know, uh, channel that is there? If there's, a po if there's a poster, if there is an out of home holding that is there, how can I integrate with that? How can I drive that person to an event that is happening? And everything is centered around this one piece uh, of uh, you know, hardware and software that is there, uh, which really is now able to track what I am doing across all of these and I can actually plan uh, for a client um, these different pieces and integrate them using this one device. So that's number one. Uh, number two, and this is for a retail client that we're doing, uh, what we're trying to do is take uh, their e-commerce platform online, marry that with what's happening in the physical space when they are, when a person is actually stepping into the physical retail uh, you know, environment. Again, understanding through the mobile phone on who he is and then personalizing based on their earlier shopping behavior. Uh, whether it's online or whether if it's in their store, because I have that data and that data, uh, you know, that unique identifier is basically their mobile phone, I can actually uh, give them much more personalized products, much more personalized. So if, I, I don't know, I mean, I give this example uh, a lot. If you've seen the movie Minority Report, the guy, uh, Tom Cruise enters this mall and uh, they read what's his iris and then accordingly give him uh, the kind of uh, new sales that are happening while he's actually walking through the mall. Uh, we've not reached that level, but I can, uh, we can th use beacons and through the phone actually give you, uh, you know, uh, relevant uh, products so that you can reach a decision much quicker than you would actually if you were not given that kind of personalization. So that's a few yeah. examples of how yeah, we actually that, end up using fair. it. That's nice. Akash? Yeah, but actually there's one area where I think uh, the topic how much is too much may still not be so applicable because I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done which is on the multi-platform attribution. And when I talk about multi-platform attribution, I'm essentially talking about the mobile world and the web world. There are a lot of players in the market who would claim that we can very clearly target the unique reach of a campaign across mobile and web and give you the right number. But I can tell you, we are far, far, far away you know, from that reality, from that, from that dawning truth. There are leading platforms, big global giants, and if you were to do any campaign on their platforms, even today, they will give you different set of impressions and reach on mobile and different set of reach and impressions on the web because the multi-platform attribution is still something... So highlighting the measurement aspect. The measurement basically. aspect. So, so, it's, so it's, it's extremely nascent stage. You're absolutely right. Uh, I think uh, while we are right now starting off on that journey, uh, I think it's, it's, it's so much in its nascent stage that uh, we are 
experimenting with it but i think it's uh, i don't i don't think it's 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 very far in terms of where it's going to happen uh, but i i do feel that it's it's going to happen very quickly now especially with the explosion of uh, video uh, with online video it's a no brainer you have to be able to actually do and not only that uh, with geo and with uh, you know as he was talking about uh, with with apps on your television do you television be a part of this media mix as well so it's not going to be just you know digital and wireless so. like the tv digital combination you spoke about that's really uh, started off also and uh, i think sachin we spoke about you know how uh, people search on the web and buy on mobile that's also the part you may like to cover here yeah. so uh, in terms of cross device one very interesting data point that we saw uh, so we have local offers and we have travel offers uh, what we noticed was that uh, people usually search for travel offers on the desktop because they it's much easier for them to do the reviews trip advisor and so on and so forth they can they can manage uh, toggling through multiple screens uh, but the purchase happens on mobile and and from a data point of view it was very unique that people started searching these travel offers either during you know late evening office hours or you know late evening uh, on a weekday but the transactions always peak on weekends and the transactions actually peak on on mobile so what we did was we actually created a campaign where you know we gave people a lot more information on desktop and we let them to desktop because at that point of time about 60% of our emails were being opened on desktop so it it started with email where we gave them a lot of information about what what are the upcoming or the trending travel destinations we let them to do their research and at the precise point we triggered certain mobile ads uh, that would lead them to make that decision process now this was not just a blind sort of cross device retargeting it was more information led uh, so if i am looking for hill stations i saw a particular offer i won't follow the consumer with that offer blindly i will put a copy that says you know looking for a vacation in the hills check these options or these options are running out fast and that is where we saw a sudden jump in in mobile transactions so that's a yeah. that's a simple way of adding communication across cross device and making it like a journey rather than just following it up yes so that brings up to a point which we were discussing on the communication please yeah somebody said okay just two minutes we'll just yeah. close and we'll take your uh, vanita my name is paritosh joshi hi paritosh hi vanita quick question there was a lot of excitement around augmented reality and virtual reality uh, like a month back or a month and a half back with the arrival of go uh, but that even internationally seems to have tapered out but does that not have implications if not in the near term in the medium term because the devices are becoming far more powerful than they have ever been and there is i mean you know in the context of some of the stuff that was happening about uh, can we provide local information uh, you know in the past we used to be asked to keep our bluetooth on but is there opportunities in vr ar and stuff like that that we haven't yet seen or which we are going to see soon sham ji want to take that yes uh extremely yes. extremely extremely exciting space uh, i think uh, if social media was something which was the buzzword for the last 3 years this is going to be for the next 3 years so if someone's talking of, thinking of doing a startup uh, please look at the ar vr space because that's really going to be a big thing uh, as we go forward because i i i and this is a personal belief that i have that uh, more than and this again my personal belief more than virtual reality it's augmented reality which is going to drive stuff Uh, as we go forward because it really takes something which is physical and you know combines digital on top of that and uh, as far as in mobile goes it's 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 actually the integration of the the digital and physical worlds which is going to be very i mean pretty much going ahead as things happen so so uh, extremely extremely gung ho about uh, augmented reality uh, and just wait if uh, microsoft comes with its uh, i forgot the name of it uh microsoft comes with a platform i think that is something which will blow uh, people away even if it's 10% of what they have uh because it it it, it is imagine that you're sitting in in a in a music in a in a in a in a hall and uh, in, in united states and you have two performers one is in physical and one is on a digital world using uh, you know augmented reality there's so many applications that are possible so yeah it, it, it's something that's absolutely there veer wants to add that yeah i think the way we look at it is that uh, if you look, uh, if you see the evolution of interfaces so first was the typical keyboard and mouse interface to information and content then it moved on to touch now we are in an era where we are seeing that there is the interface has evolved 
to what is called as conversational interfaces. So WhatsApp uh, is a form of chat. We have seen chatbot, chatbots as well, right? Now, chatbot is not chatbot. Cortana, Amazon Echo, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Siri, uh, these are conversational interfaces. So uh, this is going to change. So can you imagine that, you know, when you have a conversational interface and there is a brand, like let's say Pepsi, how would Pepsi interact, uh, you know, in a conversational interface? Is, is Pepsi a male? Is he a female? I mean, is, is it a female? What kind of tone does it have? So these are questions that we will see, uh, you know, uh, coming soon, you know, to brands. That in touch, after touch, the next big interface evolution is uh, conversation mirrors. And augmented reality and virtual reality are also an extension where the, the customer is actually interfacing with you, the brand. As a person. As, as, as a personality. So uh, this is a big question, a very exciting space. Let's see how it goes. Lots of learning to be done. Yeah, another question. Yeah, uh, a really informative talk. Thank you for that. I'm Shashwat. I'm currently pursuing my graduation. Um, the, the, probably the youngest guy. Uh, anyway, my question, sorry for deviating from the topic and asking a cliched question, but then mobile is just a tool, but how important is the content and how do you generate revenues from that? I mean, it's, so it's I think, probably uh, the most cliched Akash question, already but. covered that, that content is king, it can never be truer, actually. So uh, he actually spoke about it also. You know, just one point I would, I would like to make and something which we were discussing earlier. There is this popular notion that on digital, even, even if it's not professionally curated content, content that's made at scale, it will work. UGC, chalado. UGC, 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 UGC content bhi chalega. Wo digital mein anything, anything works. I think on the contrary, it's absolutely the opposite. On digital, the consumer is bombarded by so many choices of watching great quality content that if your content piece is not up to a certain scale, is not, does not have a strong narrative, it's for sure, my friend, not going to fly. Got you. Yes, and I think on that note, we'll wrap up this panel. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much for taking the time for being here Thank and you. to acknowledge this robust panel. May I invite on stage Mr. Sandeep Goyal, Chairman, Moge Group, to hand over a token of appreciation on behalf of the Exchange for Media Group. Of course, we've spoken about content being king, trillion devices, of course, trillion touch points, data privacy versus push notifications, control intrusion via personalization and measurement, which is also still in its nascent stage. Mr. Goyal, please request you to go up on stage. Could we have the gifts on stage, please? Mr. Sachin Kapoor, Mr. Akash Banaji, Vanita Keswani, Veer Chand, and of course, Shams Jasani. Thank you all. Can we all acknowledge them with a loud round of applause, please? Some hygiene announcements, of course, request you all to please put your mobile phones on silent mode. We don't want you to switch them off. Use them, use hashtag the maddies. There are some goodies to be won here tonight. Six goodie bags here waiting to be grabbed for the most innovative tweet using the hashtag the maddies uh, or the most frequent tweeter. And like I mentioned, evenings like these are not possible without the support of our partners. I'd like to formally acknowledge them one more time. The Maddies, powered by IMI, powering smarter customer engagement, gold partner, Voot, associate partner, Mozio, Cheetah Mobiles, Cheetah Mobile, world's number one app developer in the utility space with access to over 85 million unique smartphone users in India. Paytm, India's largest mobile payment and commerce platform, co-partner, Paytunes, your ad jingle, Everyone's Ringtone, Pocket, India's leading mobile gaming ad solutions partner. Ping Network, India's most diverse online content network. Delegate bag partner, Metlag, omni-channel messaging platform powered by Bob.